All right, well, an op amp can be more complicated than a 555 timer. So if you've watched my video on uh, going over the 555 timer circuit, uh, this is going to be a lot more in-depth uh, analog circuitry. So um, it's very, very complicated and there's some tricks being done and things. So we need to break it down into small chunks that we can understand, all right? So the first thing we're gonna understand is the middle part, okay? Start in the middle. It has a dotted line around here called bias generator, okay? Now, if you wanna follow along, I've put a link in the description to the, uh, to the uh, uh, paper that talks about uh, this particular circuit. And it has a lot of explaining like I'm going to be doing. Uh, some people like to read, you can read that. Some people just like to watch videos, so you can watch me. I might explain some things differently than the paper. I haven't read through the paper entirely, but... Um, so anyway, let's start with the bias generator, okay? And the bias generator is complicated just from the get-go. It doesn't look like anything we've seen before. So let's start with the basics, okay? All right. So we're gonna start with this circuit. And I've explained this before in another, in another video, but we'll just go through it. This is a current mirror, all right? And um, you have a 39K resistor in this circuit. So there's some voltage across this thing and whatever voltage is across that 39K will set up a current because this is just wired as a diode. This uh, collector base are shorted together. So we just have a base emitter diode. So this just looks like a, a, a resistor and a diode to ground, or actually it's minus V, okay? So that's the voltage across that 39K and we will set up a current, okay? So what current do we have? Okay, so here's a complicated uh, explanation of the current that we have. So we have plus and minus 12 volts. So across the whole thing, we have plus 12, minus, minus 12. So we have 24 volts, but we also have a diode drop. So we have 0.65, okay? And then we have 39K for the uh, resistor. So the current's going to be the voltage, 24 volts minus 0.65, divided by 39,000 ohms. And it's gonna be 599 microamps. So this sets up a 600 microamp current. All right, now what's the current over here? Because this is also going to be on. Um, well, the current over here is exactly the same, okay? It's exactly the same. I equals I, so it's a current mirror. Whatever the current is over here, you set it over here. So you program it here and it ends up over here. So that that's a current mirror. Okay, so we've seen that one before. Let's go to the next step. All right, in our circuit, we have an extra resistor. All right, so it's exactly the same thing. You have a current. And what is the current over here? Well, it's exactly 599 microamps because it's 39K and a diode. So nothing has changed over here. What's changed over here? And you would say, well, it's I2. This is I1. This is I2. I2 is going to be 600 microamps. It's just going to be the same. Well, it's not because you have this 4.7K resistor, okay? And what does that 4.7K resistor do? Well, it creates a voltage drop. There's gonna be some voltage across that resistor. Whatever current you go through here, you'll set up some voltage. What does that voltage do? Well, it moves up this voltage. It won't be minus V, it'll be minus V plus a little bit, okay? And then the base of this here, this voltage is set on this side. So you won't have as much voltage across the e base emitter junction. You won't, you won't have as much voltage as you do over here, okay? Because of this voltage drop you've introduced. And that will lower this current. Now, how do you calculate what that current's gonna be? Well, I'm not gonna do it, because <laughs> it's too damn complicated. Um, if you look at the math, it involves uh, a bunch of approximations for the, for the transistor that you're using, you end up with a logarithm in the equation. It's very complicated. It's gonna vary with temp. It's gonna vary with all kinds of stuff. So what I would say, and this is what I would do if I were the engineer, um, I would say, I don't care what the math is. <laughs> I really don't. I just want to have a particular current over here, okay? And I'm just gonna put a potentiometer in here, okay? And I'm gonna put an ammeter in here, and I'm gonna adjust my potentiometer until I get whatever current that I want, 
and that will tell me what value of R to use, okay? That's the way I would do it. Yeah, you could go through the math and maybe, I mean, SPICE is going to do it for you as well. You could put it in a SPICE simulation. You could have it step, step resistors and figure out what kind of current you want. Um, well, what is the current in our situation, right? What is it? Well, let's go measure it. Uh, so we can um, measure the voltage across the 5.9. You just get out your, your voltmeter, measure the voltage across 39K. It's 22.7 volts, okay? Then let's measure the voltage across the 4.7K. It's 0.118 volts, okay? That's what the voltage is over here, all right? So uh, we have 22.7 divided by 39K, okay? And that's 562 um, microamps. Now, what did we calculate on our back of the envelope? It was 599. Well, in the real world, it's 582, okay? Because this isn't exactly 39K, and this isn't exactly 0.65 volts, and all the other stuff. Anyway, in our case, actual, we've measured it. It's 582 microamps, okay? What about this side? Okay, we had uh, 0.118 volts across this uh, across uh, this uh, 4.7K, we have 25 microamps. So in this particular case, we have 582 microamps on this side. We only have 25 microamps on this side, okay? So this is a mirror, I forget what it's called. Uh, it probably says in the write-up, but anyway. Uh, is it a Wilson? No, it's not a Wilson. Anyway, uh, by adding this resistor, uh, you can change the mirror. You, you put it in a multiplication factor. You, you, that's the way you could think of it. Um, and you started out with 582 microamps, but now you've mirrored it over and you have uh, 25 microamps over here. Now, if you change this, will this change linearly? No, I think it changed logarithmically. It's kind of a weird thing. So anyway, just measure it, okay? That's my, that's my go, that's, that's my takeaway. Just measure it. All right, so that's what we have in our circuit, or is it? All right, let's take a look at our circuit. So uh, here's our 4.7K, here's our diode. This is all set up. Here's our 39K. And then we have some funny business up at the top, okay? All right, well, we have a current. This is a current source, so we, we definitely have a current source in here, okay? But now we have another diode drop in there, okay? Well, what is this? Well, take a look at it. Here's a, uh, a mirror as well. So we have a mirror here and a mirror here, okay? So what this is doing is it's taking that 582 uh, microamps and it's mirroring it over here. So over here, we also have 582 microamps, okay? So that's, that's what that one's doing. What's this one doing? Well, it mirrors what's ever over here, over to here. It does it backwards. And it kind of con conflicts with this one down here. So this one's con a bit confusing. So let's not worry about that right now, <laughs> okay? This one's easy to understand, that one's not. All right, so let's go one more step. All right, now remember I talked about um, this being an extra current mirror. So this 582 gets mirrored over here to 582. Does it really do that? So if it's 582 current here, this is just uh, a weird thing. It acts like two diodes, we'll see that later. And then we're just gonna go through this transistor and then we will go through a 51 ohm. Ah, there's another resistor. So if we think we have a current mirror, uh, current here and that current's going through the 51, we can check to see if we still have 582 microamps across this 51 ohm resistor, okay? So this is what I just talked about. We have a current mirror set up We've been programmed to 580, 582 microamps on this side, okay? Um, what is it over here? It should be 582, right? Well, uh, we can measure the voltage across this 51 ohms and check it out. Uh, it measured 0 0.035 volts, okay? And so 0 0.305 volts over 51 ohms is 680 microamps. So once again, this isn't exactly 51 ohms, the, the, the transistor aren't matching everything, but we basically validated that, yeah, we do have a current mirror. So whatever current we have over here, we do have it over here. We have this, we have this 51 ohms here, all right? 
Okay, let's talk about this weird thing here. It's a, it's a NPN with two with two resistors, and it's just kind of hanging there all by itself. Let's take a look at that. Okay, uh, here we go. So we have an NPN with these two uh, two resistors. What do those two resistors do? Well, well, we don't know really, but what we do know is we have a voltage drop from here to here. Okay, that's called VBE. VBE. Voltage base to emitter, base to emitter voltage. And that's going to be about 0.65 volts, okay? So we know we have 0.65 volts across a resistor, a 7.5K. Well, if we have a voltage and we have a resistor, we can calculate what current is flowing through that resistor, okay? So we have 0.65 volts divided by 7,500 ohms equals 87 microamps. We have we have 87 microamps flowing through here. Well, guess what? We also have 87 microamps flowing through that resistor. If we have resistance and, and, and uh, current, we can figure out what is the voltage drop across that resistor, okay? So we have voltage equals IR. So the voltage across the 47K resistor is 87 microamps times the 4.7K, okay? Um, so what is it? 0.4 volts. All right, so let's think about that. Um, over here, we have 0.65 volts from here to here, and we have 0.4 volts from here to here. So what's the total voltage? Total voltage is 1.05 volts. So that's the volts collector emitter, okay? So from the collector to the emitter, we have about 1.05 volts. Why do we want something to do that? What, 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 what possible use <laughs> could you have here? Um, it doesn't make any sense, right? Um, let's see how it's used. Before we, before we talk about that weird V one volt, one volt uh, transistor, what it, Let's take a look at the output circuit. So this is a simplified output circuit. We have a push-pull, PNP, NPN output with some current limiting resistors. So it's short circuit protected to a certain extent. Um, and remember, if we don't have these two, two diodes over here on this side, we will get crossover distortion. We, we would have this weird crossover distortion. So by biasing it into the class AB amplifier, okay, we put these two, this diode compensates for that diode drop, and this diode compensates for that diode drop. So now, when this moves up and down, the output will move up and down, and it won't have any crossover distortion, all right? And we're gonna drive this thing with a Darlington, so we'll have lots and lots of gain, all right? So that is the output circuit. It has a current mirror uh, input, so it has some current going through this thing, so constant current just to keep it running, okay? So that's what the output looks like. Well, how do you get two diodes? Well, you can put in two diodes, um, but they put in one of these instead, okay? So this uh, weird, they call it a VBE generation, but it's one volt, it generates one volt. So they put a one volt here. So one volt from here to here, okay? There's a one volt difference there, and that keeps the output a nice AB amplifier that doesn't have any crossover distortion, okay? Oh, man, there's a lot of stuff in here. All right, so that's what that is.